one thing about one thing most people don't know as me being a bodybuilder now and a weightlifter, you know, back then is that bodybuilding actually got me into weightlifting, believe it or not. And actually the legendary documentary Pumping Iron, you know, I probably saw that movie when I was probably nine, maybe 10 years old. And I just wanted to build muscle. I didn't know the process. You just lifting weights, build muscle. That was my mentality then. So where I'm from, I'm originally from Nigeria, and um, there was no bodybuilding. So I didn't know the difference between bodybuilding and weightlifting. So when I finally went to the facility, I wanted to train. I said, I want to build muscle. The coach said, we don't, we don't do bodybuilding here. We do weightlifting. I said, okay, that's close enough. And didn't think I was going to take weightlifting serious, but the coaches saw the talent in me and how dedicated I am in the sport. So they started a program. And I went through the program, became the national Nigerian champion, went to the All-African Games, won three silver, another three silver, the All-African Weightlifting um, Championship. And then the program for the Olympics went on. And they went to 96 Olympics. Yeah, I didn't win any medal, but that was, that was my dream. My dream was to represent my country in the Olympics. And I knew that I was going to go back to bodybuilding. But before my Olympic lifting career was over, I was... You know, as you know, body Olympic lifters are not allowed to do specific bodybuilding movements, especially bicep curls, all the aesthetic exercises. So I was sneaking it in a little bit here and there because I knew at the end of my weightlifting career, I'm going to become a bodybuilder regardless. So I was just sneaking in, you know, you could dab in posing, bodybuilding posing here and there. So after the 96 Olympics, I retired from weightlifting. And that's, that's when my, my bodybuilding career started. Wow. Holy smokes. <laughs> you, you were an Olympian. You were, okay. So let's do this. Talk to me. How old were you when you, first off, when you retired from o Olympic weightlifting and kind of did that transition? I was 23. 23. Okay. And yeah. were you still in, were you still in Nigeria at this point or were you in, in the, in the USA? I was already here in the US. Were you representing Nigeria at the Olympic Games? Yes, it was Nigeria that I represented in the Olympic Games. Yeah, was Nigeria. Okay. Yeah. I see. Gotcha, gotcha. And so a lot of your training, was it taking place in Nigeria, like from your teenage years, or was that in the U.S. Yeah. as well? It was in Nigeria. I mean, I grew up there. You know, I was born there. And it's interesting, um, we didn't have the high-tech, you know, equipment and facility. And I think we wanted to just be better, regardless of what we had in front of us. I remember training with, you know, bent bars, and sometimes some of the edge of the bars would slide off, would slide off as we're lifting. So some of the bumper plates, the rubbers would turn off. When we we don't even know if we're actually lifting 120 pounds or 119.5, you know, kilos. So some of the platforms were torn up. Some of the platform you drop the weight. Some of the platform would just the 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 wood would just fly off and you have to get away from it. So we didn't really care what we had because we had to drive. I just wanted to get better. If you put a cement in front of me or a rock in front of me, I just wanted to lift weight, regardless of what kind of equipment it was. So I was already training. To, so I came to the U.S. on a, um, the Olympic scholarship, training scholarship to train for the 96 Olympics. And that's how I ended up here in the United States before the 96 Olympics. So you were you were in the U.S. training for the 96 Olympics, representing Nigeria. Yes. Wow. Yes. Cool. Okay, that's pretty yeah. cool. And yeah. what was it? Was it like a team of you guys? Or like how was, what was the, uh, how did, was that? Like, or was it just you? Was it like a team of Nigerians that came over to the U.S. to compete? Um, basically, it was two of us that made the Olympic standard. Because in the Olympic weightlifting, um, you have to make the required total Olympic standard before you can qualify to go to the Olympics. So out of all the lifters in Nigeria, there were just two lifters that made it to the 96 Olympics. And that's why both of us came to the States under the IOC scholarship to train for the Olympics. Gotcha. Okay. That's really cool, man. And Thank so you. that, th yeah, absolutely. So how, how, that must, first off, that must have been an incredible experience, right? Like, I mean, to represent your country at the Olympics, I'm sure and in weightlifting, which is not an easy thing to do. Like you must have been, yes. yeah, at an elite level with that. What, walk us through, like, what was your uh, experience like? How was the placing? Do you remember some of that or? Sure. Oh, man. I mean, 
experiences like that never leave you because it's just it's like a lifetime, once in a lifetime. Some people go to the Olympics more than once. I just want to go there one time because I knew how hard the training. I mean, you're basically giving up your life for this, for, for only, I, I think I spent for my six lifts together, probably maybe about two hours. Obviously, there's a break in between lifters, two hours. So basically, I spent my entire life, you know, from when I was 14 years old to when I was 23 to showcase myself for just two hours. So the training was was just intense. I mean, Olympic training, Olympic lifting training has completely changed today. I mean, these lifters have it really good. Back then, it was just brutal. I mean, I don't know if you have ever been around an Olympic lifting facility before. It's just, the training is just brutal. I mean, it's more mental for me than the physical. The physical side, your body will be broken physically. But if your mind is not really in tune into what your dreams and your goals are, you will give up. And coming from where I come from, you know, like I said, we don't have the proper facilities. We don't have the proper medical, the proper nutrition. And so you just have to go with your heart. You have to go with your, whatever you have from within, you have to pull it out every training session. So I think I was just, I had a dream. The dream, the dream was so, so big. It was so big in my mind that it doesn't matter what I go through or what I have to go through, I'm going to make sure I'll get there no matter what. That is incredible.